Thank you, Jason. You know, I heard Jason's comment about uh, feedback. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm black. And um, <laughs> in, in our community, we love it when people talk back to us. So uh, if I dance or if I say something that might be halfway good, you can give me a shout or throw your foot or throw your shoe. All of that's great. <laughs> Thank you. So, Jason's given us a great overview of where we've been. Our community, our memberships, our designs, our specifications, they've all been growing, and it's all because of the community. I would like to introduce our next speaker, who's been a very big part, he and his company, um, have been a big part of our growth over the last few years. I'd like to introduce you, Kashaga Vade. Thank you, Cody. It's, it's great to be here. This is the sixth OCP summit in the US. And in the years that we have come to OCP, as most of you, you've seen how OCP has grown over the years. Uh, what Jason presented, 200, almost 200 members in OCP, of which 88 joined the last year. It's just fantastic to see all this progress. So we have a whole bunch of announcements uh, and exciting news to share with you today. So let me start with, uh, with uh, what we have to show you. Uh, so just a quick uh, re a brief on uh, our contributions to OCP over the years. Microsoft joined OCP in 2014, and over the past you know, three years, we've been actively involved in the OCP community at the board level, in the various committees, and also on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, helping advance the OCP charter. Uh, uh, 2014 is when we first joined and contributed the open server chassis, and we followed up in 2015 with... Um, the battery-backed UPS and the switch abstraction interface. And then just last year, uh, we made a big contribution for what we call Sonic, which was uh, open source networking. And towards the end of last year, uh, which is going to be the next topic I'll talk about, uh, we contributed what we, what we call Project Olympus. So what is Project Olympus? Uh, so to, before we go into that, uh, let's just take a quick look at what motivated us to do what we call Project Olympus. Uh, so there were a couple of problems we are trying to solve. The first one was uh, open source hardware development can be done in a better way. Uh, we realized, working closely with the OCP community and the OCP foundation, that if we were to contribute design specifications to OCP sooner, then the community has more uh, of an ability to collaborate and build on top of those specifications. Uh, so, th so what we decided to do was to take our next-generation cutting-edge hardware when it was around 50% complete, and we contributed that to OCP. It wasn't done. That was the whole point. It was around 50% complete. And the idea was that we get it out there so that open source hardware could be developed just like open source software. Uh, so we gave those specifications. We introduced a new hardware development model with the help of the OCP Foundation. And the idea was to help bootstrap an uh, industry ecosystem around this specification so that the community can come together, they can contribute, they can fork the design, they can modify the design, and it creates a proliferation of uh, options for end users. Uh, specifically, the two key parts of the Project Olympus design were what we call the universal motherboard, and what we call the universal PDU. The, the principles we set out to solve with Project Olympus were really, really simple. Users should have the ability to run any workload in any data center across the globe and have faster time to market. Really simple principles. So how do you do that? And that required us to take a look at the, the core system design and sort of reinvent how servers and storage should be done. Uh, the result was uh, Project Olympus. Uh, the universal motherboard was specified so that it can virtually run any workload that you can run in the cloud, anywhere from email to AI to storage and so on. And the PDU that we uh, designed, you know, it's, uh, e it's easily deployable anywhere in the globe. I think the simple way to think about the PDU, it's, 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 a, it's kind of an interesting concept. You know, when you travel around the world, you, know, you don't take different chargers for your phone, depending on which country you go to. You take an adapter. Your phone charger is always the same. 
And we thought, why can't we bring that simple concept to data center racks? Uh, so what you see is uh, we have one universal PDU and adapters that are for a specific data center location, specific electrical standard. So that allows us to scale seamlessly across the globe. To find out more about Project Olympus uh, and to give you an insight into how the progress has been over the past uh, you know, six months, uh, we created a short video. Uh, so let's, let's take a quick look at the video, and, I'll, and we'll be back. The world is moving towards a future of cloud-based computing. At Microsoft, we've been building infrastructure really to enable people to use our services whenever they need it. The global infrastructure that we've built out supports over 200 services with over a billion customers. We tend to go like 10x every four or five years in terms of the scale at which we grow. A big part of our story now and our focus is really around how do we simplify the whole supply chain so that we can respond quickly to the fast-changing business that we're in. Microsoft Project Olympus is really the culmination of all of these different requirements that we've evolved to drive a standard platform that we can deploy at scale. With Project Olympus, we really designed a modular and flexible infrastructure that allows for a wide range of applications. We've designed for larger CPUs and higher wattage, and we've even designed to allow the expansion with JBOD capabilities to expand the overall number of workloads that we can run in these environments. We've taken a lot of learnings at running hyperscale data centers and really use that in the design of Project Olympus. The modularity and flexibility of the system allows us to build solutions that can deliver compute, storage, networking capabilities. Being able to provide that as Microsoft in the open community allows everyone in the ecosystem to take advantage of it. It's been really exciting to work with the OCP community. Their enthusiasm in helping us design and develop, it's been a great collaboration and it's allowed us to bring the solution to market much, much quicker. Intel has been involved in the OCP community from the very beginning. As we transition to our next generation Intel Xeon processors, codenamed Skylake, we see the opportunity to really take platforms like Project Olympus and the other investments that we've made in OCP and see real adoption, not just in the hyperscale arena, but across many different customer types, from SFSI to telco to enterprise and users in general. This was really an effort to create a universal motherboard and set of building blocks that would enable many customers to deploy this project in their environment beyond just Microsoft. It enables customers to take advantage of performance efficiency and cost effectiveness, so it really speeds tech adoption, not just for the biggest players industries, but for enterprises or other cloud service providers that want to follow suit. OCP really wants to promote hardware innovation and encourage choice. And doing both at the same time is very difficult. I think Project Olympus has a really unique way of addressing both the imperative for innovation and the urgent need for choice. It allows the flexibility in key components to tune each system for the particular workload that it's going to run, whether it's machine intelligence all the way down to something as prosaic as email. Microsoft is one of the leaders in OCP, and it sits in a unique position where it's both a huge user of OCP systems as well as a provider of technology itself. By working with Microsoft, we can leverage the understanding Microsoft has on both sides of that equation to produce better CPU solutions. Microsoft saw the needs of this open source community. They decided that they would design a highly efficient, scalable rack architecture, and they would deliver it as a set of building blocks to the industry through Open Compute Project. The Olympus engineers recognized the need to retain emissions, safety, and regulatory compliance. They have a very flexible AC input system into the power. And that flexibility allows that rack architecture to be installed in virtually anyone's data center around the world, regardless of the power infrastructure that they already have in place. Project Olympus is going to be a fantastic hardware platform for driving new usages. Because it's completely open sourced, we now have a community that has access to the complete design files. We'll be able to innovate on top of those design files and create new products, new I.O that works with Project Olympus, and they'll be able to tackle new use cases that they have. Project Olympus is the most flexible, modular hardware architecture that we've designed. And we're excited to share that with the ecosystem of OCP.
Yeah, so it's, it's been an exciting journey over the past uh, you know, few months since we released Project Olympus, and uh, we have gotten so much support from the industry, the OCP ecosystem, the community, and of course the OCP Foundation. Uh, that's, that's, that's helped to progress this project quite a bit. Uh, today, uh, I would like to share with you uh, some of the ecosystem partners we have uh, to date. Uh, this, is, this list is growing. Uh, these are the partners we have. Uh, on the CPU side, you'll notice uh, uh, we worked closely with Intel on the design of the universal motherboard. And we are happy to welcome AMD back into the data center. Uh, AMD will be supporting uh, Project Olympus uh, with their new design. Uh, there are two new CPU players as well, uh, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, on the system side, uh, you know, we have a wide variety of support uh, from systems. And you know, this, is, this is what excites you know, us about OCP. OCP is a, is a place where the best talent in the industry comes together. They work together on solving the hard problems. And they create new products, new innovation by working together jointly. And you know, a great example of how OCP comes together and how that has helped us in driving you know, uh, Project Olympus, the ecosystem, is uh, uh, with uh, something I would like to talk about uh, in the next slide, with uh, NVIDIA and Ingresys, who are two new OCP members. So today, what we're announcing is uh, a new addition to the Project Olympus ecosystem for hyperscale GPU acceleration. Uh, we codenamed this uh, to be HGX1. Uh, essentially, this is meant to solve the new emerging market segment for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, you know, you hear about self-driving cars, voice recognition, image recognition, cognitive computing. AI is a pretty hot field these days. And uh, you know, like other data center operators, we have uh, a lot of interest and demand on how we go about solving this. Uh, so working with NVIDIA and working with Ingresys, we, we, we created this reference design for uh, this uh, chassis, uh, which has eight NVIDIA GPUs that can be connected using NVLink for an extremely high bandwidth solution uh, to solve these uh, challenging machine learning problems. But we went one step further. H having eight GPUs in a box is just the start of the performance uh, scalability that we wanted to get. We have the ability in this, uh, in this uh, chassis to, to seamlessly connect up to four of these chassis with each other using PCI Express to give up to 32 GPUs in an extremely configurable high bandwidth solution. I don't think there's anything out there today that gives you this amount of performance scalability, extreme performance scalability. 32, 32 GPUs behind a host node. So if you're a machine learning researcher, I'm sure you'll be excited to see this kind of innovation coming to OCP by virtue of the collaboration happening in the ecosystem. And it's, it's, it's great to see this uh, as a role model for more innovations that will be coming in OCP. Uh, moving on to networking. So I mentioned earlier that uh, last year, Microsoft contributed uh, along with its partners, uh, uh, Sonic, which was uh, open source software for network switching. Today, I would like to uh, talk about, uh, talk about uh, advancements that have been made in this regard. Uh, a big piece of that is uh, Sonic has been now proven at scale. We are deploying Sonic-based uh, switches in our data center. This is the, so we are deploying the software stack on the switches in our data center. Uh, secondly, the other thing we wanted to do was make it easy for uh, people to develop network applications. So, so w one thing we did there was uh, to have a containerized approach. So you know how simple it is to do a dev test in a container with Docker, and then, then take your dev environment, deploy it to the cloud, and uh, you know, it just makes it so easy and portable. So we thought, why not bring that same approach to network applications? And that's exactly what uh, has been enhanced in Sonic this year. If you are a developer, you can develop network applications on your, on your lab or your machine, and you can easily port them over to the networking stack that's running on the switch. This will completely change how network applications are designed and how network switches can be managed and provisioned. You can use uh, Docker orchestration like Swarm to manage these switches in production. And essentially, you end up treating the switch just like any other server. Uh, it's no different. 
Uh, in addition to that, there are rich monitoring and telemetry diagnostic capabilities that have been added to Sonic. So it's turning out to be a very uh, you know, open and uh, rich platform on which uh, open, uh, open switch networking and disaggregation can be built. Uh, the, the ecosystem for Sonic has grown as well. Uh, there's been quite a few additions to diff the different tiers of the networking stack for supporting Sonic. On the ASIC side, we have Marvel and, and, and EFOS who are now part of the Sonic ecosystem. On the application side, Arista joined OCP, and uh, uh, they will be uh, uh, open sourcing the EOS uh, BGP modules that will be running on top of Sonic. Uh, there's other uh, examples also where uh, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, and Ubuntu have collaborated to bring uh, the uh, uh, Sonic deployment using Ubuntu Snap tool um, on the Facebook Wedge 100 design. So another example of community collaboration, how we can all come together and drive uh, open ecosystems and bring those benefits to the broader OCP community. So it's great to see all this, uh, all this uh, you know, enhancements in Sonic and the progress being made. Uh, for the next part of, the, uh, of my talk, let me call my colleague uh, Leandert Van Doon on stage. Uh, he has some exciting news to share, so we'll talk about that. Take a shot, Rob. Hey, Leandert, come on up. see you. So, so Leandert, uh, we know you've been working on a very important project at Microsoft for the past few years. Why don't you tell us more about that? Yeah, so as you just said, these are exciting times for servers. And there are disruptions happening all over the place. And one of those disruptions is in the silicon industry. And as a result of that disruption, high-performance silicon is available to chipless uh, or chip uh, uh, foundryless companies. And that combined with the scale of cloud, the growing scale of cloud, we're seeing this, what I can only refer to as this Cambrian explosion of servers. That's right. It's a great time to be in the silicon industry. There's so much innovation. But what is Microsoft doing about that? Good question. So I am very happy to announce here today that we are actually driving innovation with ARM servers for our data centers. Specifically, we've been working with ARM server vendors, including Cavium and Qualcomm, on optimizing their parts for our data center needs. And not just their generation that will be out this year, but also the ones beyond that, and even the ones beyond that. In addition, we've been running evaluations of their hardware, of their current com the components that come out this year. And that included porting our cloud services workloads to them. And some of these cloud services workloads we actually run in parallel with production systems. And the result we're seeing is actually quite compelling to us. These throughput-oriented servers, which have hyper-threat performance, so this is not the old ARM servers that you probably were aware of, the high number of core and threat counts, the connectivity options we're seeing around new bus standards, and the integration of components is all very compelling to us. But uh, yeah, a, lot of, uh, a big question on people's mind is going to be regarding the instruction set change. Uh, it's always hard to port applications from the one instruction set to another. So what are the kinds of uh, workloads you see that are a good fit uh, for the ARM ecosystem? So yeah, absolutely. Software is always the Achilles heel in this, right? I always joke with my silicon partners, it's easy to build hardware. Um, and this is also the first time that we're introducing a new instruction set in our data center. So there is a quite a lot of heavy lifting. So rather than porting every piece of software that Microsoft has ever written, uh, we actually looked at where is the value for these servers, what are the problems that we want to attack, and then scope it around that. So we very quickly came to the conclusion that cloud services are the ones to target. So what does that mean? That is search and index generation. It is storage. It is big data. Uh, it is machine learning. All those kinds of properties. And those properties together actually represent over half of our data center capacity. So there is actually quite a lot of potential. Uh, for different kind of servers there. The next step we did is then looked at what software do we need to move for that. So we actually ported Windows Server to ARM64 for internal use only. We don't see much use right now, much of a demand in the enterprise space. We also ported the toolkits with that, .NET Core framework, applications, obviously. 
Um, and you can actually see this on the floor. In the expo, both Qualcomm and Cavium are running Windows Server with one of our cloud services workload, a Bing AI index generation uh, program. Uh, that's, that's great progress. Uh, I think uh, one thing would be also to talk about would be how can the OCP community benefit from the work that you have done at Microsoft on advancing the ARM ecosystem? Yeah, so one thing, clearly ARM is all about an open partnership. And by going public on this, we can actually work way more openly with that community. With respect to Project Olympus, I actually here have a motherboard that uh, we built together with Qualcomm. It complies to our Project Olympus standards. This is their uh, first 10 nanometer ARM server chip um, that we are evaluating as part of our effort. It is one thing to go and figure out how to get a new instruction set into your data center. It's a completely different thing to go and figure out how do I build chassis around that, that conform to all our data standards, have the right power, the right management interfaces. Because of Project Olympus Lego design, I don't have to worry about that. I can just work with my partners on the motherboard design, and I can slot that in. So to me, what Project Olympus represents is really a way to quickly deploy my innovations and monetize them. That's great. You know, it's great to see how we are bringing the benefits of our work back to the OCP community. Thank you for being on stage. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So, uh, Lindert, uh, Lindert will be giving a much more uh, detailed talk on, on this topic at 2.35 in the exec talk. Uh, so if you're interested in finding out more about the work that's going on in this front, uh, please go to Lindert's talk at 2.35. He'll, he'll cover this in a lot more uh, richer detail. So Microsoft, of course, as you saw, we are committed to OCP. We have been uh, active participants, and uh, you know, we are a key part of uh, advancing the OCP ecosystem along with uh, other players in OCP. Uh, the, the, Olymp the Project Olympus momentum and the sonic momentum we are seeing has been tremendous. So thank you for everybody in the OCP community who has helped us to achieve that goal. Uh, we are very pleased to announce this partnership with NVIDIA and Ingresys for a new industry standard for machine learning and uh, so hardware, the HGX1. Uh, you, wanna, you can see a demo for the, of that in the booth at, uh, on the show floor. And finally, as uh, Lindert mentioned, uh, uh, we are starting to get good momentum around ARM64 ecosystem also and bring the benefits of that to the OCB community through Project Olympus. Uh, to, to find out more, uh, like I said earlier, please attend Lindert's talk at uh, 2.35 p.m. Uh, uh, we'll have a lot of these demos in the Microsoft booth on the show floor. And as always, you can always go find out all the specifications and collateral on the OCP GitHub site where we have posted all the open source material. Thank you for attending. It's, it's great being here. And have a great OCP summit. Mm -hmm.